today is not Thanksgiving Day. This Thursday is. And so uh, I'm going to do something I haven't done in the 14 years of being here. Uh, yesterday, I was sitting there um, a watch, you know, I actually wasn't watching anything. I dozed off actually and was doing it. I didn't even turn the TV on until after 7.30 last night uh, to going on there. I didn't, I wasn't watching sports all day. And, uh, and so, but I was looking at uh, someone that, a historian that I love reading about and uh, his name is David Barton and bless my heart knowing that Jeff and Lisa was just in their, one of his conferences. David Barton is probably the greatest Christian historian uh, in this nation or anybody around the world that I know. Uh, and he's, uh, he's not attached to any religious party lines. He just, he just, now he has his belief systems, but I'm just saying he just opened to, to the, to the system of just history. And I, I love history part. And so I was reading some stuff and Angel says, well, maybe there's a video about it. And so I found a six minute video clip that was verbatim half of what I read. And I wrote down the other part that I wanted to put too, cause he didn't say it. And I sent it to Rob to do this. So this is like six minutes and 43 seconds. Uh, 44 maybe, well, but what's one second amongst family? And, uh, and so I want to give up some time here to, uh, to show this, and I want to bring a point across uh, this morning, all right? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> that, gives you, uh, that gives you an understanding that I just can't explain. This thing is based upon God, and it was all about God's abundant goodness, and uh, it's not about turkeys and hams and football. And uh, it's about us being thankful to God. Amen. Uh, a holiday based upon the goodness of God. And, um, and so uh, there were some things in there that he brought about uh, the, uh, that year when they had that great harvest. And so uh, I wanted to... Uh, just to read this last part here, because this is the part that he did. And it's like he stopped there, but this was all verbatim in what I was looking at. He said, however, while the pilgrims enjoy times of prosperity for which they thank God, they also suffered extreme hardships. In fact, in 1623, they experienced an extended and prolonged drought. You know, it's almost like we give thanks, God is so good, and then something right on the heels of it happens. How many's ever been in a place to where you're so thankful for God doing something good, and right on the heels of it, there's a drought. There's a drought in your life, there's a drought in your work, there's a drought in something. Drought's a drought. Amen. And so when I read this, I'm thinking, what? You know, God, we've had such a great time, and then we've gone through what we're going through, and so what do we do now? At Thanksgiving, what do we do now? It's not about how many can gather together, whose homes can gather together. This is this thing's about the heart, and this and I'm not just preaching holiday. This is about God. This was based upon God, the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Writ. They had this extreme hardship. In fact, they had this, like I said, in 1623, experiences drought, knowing that without a change in the weather, there'd be no harvest. And the winter would be filled with death and starvation. Governor Bradford called the pilgrims in a time of prayer and fasting to seek God's direct intervention. This is all about them chasing God with all of their heart. Well, pastor, you like that stuff because you love history. I love history. I love history that goes back to God. I love history that goes back to God. Significantly, shortly after that time of prayer, just so happens after that short time of prayer, and to the great amazement of the Indians who witnessed the scene, clouds appeared in the sky and a steady, gentle rain began to fall as Governor Bradford explained. Now, this is written in 1623, but I'm not going to read all of that. But he said it came without, without either wind or thunder or any violence but it just came steadily. And then, and then he said to, uh, to, towards the end of it that uh, when this is done and afterwards the Lord sent them such reasonable showers with, with interchange the fair weather and with warm blessings caused a fruitful and liberal harvest to their no small comfort and rejoicing. The drought had been broken. The fall therefore produced an abundant harvest there was cause for another thanksgiving. 
So let me tell you, when you give thanks, it will cause another opportunity to give thanks. When things are not going well, when they had a great opportunity, had a bountiful harvest, and then on the heels of that, they had a drought, and they knew there'd be much starvation and death if something didn't happen. And in the midst of that, they begin to fast and pray, and God shows up again. And out of nowhere, without wind, without violent storms, nothing. A gentle rain came. The seasons went rain and warm and everything was smooth until they had an abundant harvest again. And then they had another reason to give thanks. Let me tell you, you have reasons to give thanks every day of your life. Amen. Uh, giving thanks is not based upon your position. It's based upon the revelation of your heart. There's times I've been in a position where it didn't seem thankful, but my heart says, thank God, for he's the one that delivers me out of them all. Amen. He's the one that delivers me out of them all. So, so I am thankful for, for that. And, um, and if you want to know more about the history of America and God, you can go to Wall Builders, uh, David Barton, and you can find out anything that you need to know. And uh, so, Rob and Julie, thank you for getting that together and uh, sh showing that. <clears throat> Turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yeah! Oh, yes, that's better than being in front of a camera and believing I'm hearing you. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Um, it's not to uh, go backward and to bring this down, uh, but I want us to look at things because we've had an abundance of life. Now there seems to be somewhat of a drought, both not weather, it's been raining for two days, but, uh, but I see spiritual drought in people. I see drought in people's joy. I see a drought in people's excitement. I see people basing God and serving God uh, or, or giving herself to God based upon their situations and, and what goes. That's why I tell people joy is a spiritual force. Joy has nothing to do with emotions. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is a spiritual force. Happiness is not a spiritual law. It's not a spiritual force. Happiness is based upon happenings. Joy is based upon the joy giver on the inside. I'm happy because this was a good happening. I'm sad because this is a bad happening. And, and people are up and down because of happenings and happenings and because their happiness is tied to things. Their happiness is tied to people. Their happiness is tied to events. That's their happiness. But joy is tied to the spirit of God. The joy of the Lord is the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of God's spirit. Joy is a attached to that. So I, my joy level is there regardless of what happenings around me. It's the happenings. Regardless of what happens around me, my joy is still there. Amen. I have, I have faced things that, 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 that took away every bit of happiness, but I knew the thing that brought me strength was still joy. My joy is not based upon happenings. It's based upon God. It's based upon the revelation of his truth. And you have, to, you have to remind yourself and believe it on purpose. Now, this is not so happy, but we can find joy in this. Chapter three, verse one, second Tim. But know this, that in the last days, how many people believe that we are in the last days? Some of you don't believe it, we're butting up to the last days or we're getting close to the last days. So that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 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 and un holy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong. Thank God we don't have any headstrong people around. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I should go ahead and read five. Having a form of godliness, 
but really denies its power. And from such people, social distance. (laughs) Come on. From such people, stay away. From such people, stay away. The Amplified Bible, not in all five verses, it says... uh, the first two, but understand this, that in the last day, that in the last days will come, set in, it will come or it will set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. I'm watching great stress and trouble hit people. Perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous scoffers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and profane. This is what's happening in the last days. But also in the last days, the Bible says, I didn't write it down, but I like to add, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Same last days. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams and on servants and on handmaidens. And I will pour out in those days and they shall prophesy. In those same last days where they're unthankful, unholy, boasters and proud and, 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 and self-conceited, he said, I will still show wonders in heaven above and signs in earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor, smoke. There's different things that will transpire in the last days. Different things that will transpire in the last days. Go to 1 Thessalonians. Last Sunday night, Angel and I read this verse. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse Thessalonians chapter five. I said, I think there's an order here that's, that's important for us to look at. Hallelujah. Look at verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Your King James says the feeble-minded. You know, people joke about the feeble-minded, but it says you got to comfort them. That actually meant feeble, the, uh, the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak, be patient with all. Oh, dear Lord. Now, Pastor, you could have preached anything other than being patient with all. How many has ever been with people that's very hard to be patient with? Put the camera on them. Everybody see? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> be patient with all. You know, all of us have a level of patience. You know, you can be patient with some, and there's, and there's sometimes I think, I mean, I'm just so patient with that person, and other people that don't give you hardly any kind of uh, agitation. It's like you can be short with. And I'm thinking, well, this thinking, patience is a natural patience is a messed up deal, but spiritual patience is being consistent all the time. Amen, because patience is what holds the door open to the supernatural in your life. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourself and for all. Not just for yourself. Give me, 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 praise ye the Lord. You know, people want to know about just me, 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 me. Praise ye the Lord. Give me, give me. No, it's not all about, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's all about him. All right. I should have went right to verse 16. Save the embarrassment. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing in everything in everything in times of good in times of bad in times of covid in times of not in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you do not quench the spirit so that so maybe if it's in order if you don't give thanks maybe you do quench this do not quench the spirit do not despise prophecies 
test all things, hold fast to that which is good. That's what I told angels, I'm hanging on to you. Why? Because the Bible said, hold fast to that which is good. I think I let go of her. Abstain from every form of evil. The Amplified Bible once again says in the 18th verse, just the 18th alone, thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. This is who we are and this is what we do, amen? We are going to give thanks. In this last days, we are not gonna allow our flesh to determine what we're thankful for. I, I, uh, you know, some people just by nature are a little more sensitive than others. Some people are in nature. I know some people that weep quick and some people that don't weep at all. I know some people cry and some people don't cry. Some people are tender hearted, some people are not. That doesn't mean they don't love people, they just don't. I have the habit of watching some of the same movies over and over again because I like the outcome. I don't like surprises. I like the outcome of movies. I like good movies. I have a set that I call Ken's Classics. And uh, Scott and I sometimes sit right next to each other on an airplane uh, if we're in an exit row. But if we're not in an exit row, he'll sit across the aisle so we can both have aisle seats. And he'll see me watch one of the same movies over and over. And I can tell at a certain part of that movie, he'll look over because he's waiting. He's waiting for it. No matter how many times I watch it, it still gets me. I don't even watch Frosty Snowman no more. I can't stand when he melts. I'm done with it. But no, uh, I, it's just a part of who you are, you know, and, uh, and and everybody is wired different. But there's one thing about it, crying or not crying, sensitive or not sensitive, being thankful plays a part of your victorious success in your life. I'm thankful. I have, you know, sometimes maybe people that always have all their life and they always used to getting, maybe... Maybe there is an element of you spoiled brat. Is when you don't have, and then you're so thankful that you do have, it doesn't matter how old you get, you're thankful. I started setting a precedent in my life that every time somebody goes to bless me, I, I begin to thank God. Why? Because for somebody to give to me and bless me, I see it as God just recommended me to someone. And if you look at it in that fashion, you will always have a thankful heart that God just recommended me to someone that he wanted to bless. And when you look at it as God recommended you to someone, then you are thankful for what God's doing. You are thankful. I have a hard time receiving anything new that if I know somebody else really desires something, I have a hard time not to just hold back because if I could any way possible, I could help bring up the pastor in life, I would do it. That's just, I just the way that I want to live because Jesus gave it all to me. He provided it all for me. So I am, I am thankful. Something I, sorry. Uh, I am thankful because he's the one paid the price. Amen. I've never given anything to someone that God hasn't returned back. Never. I've never given that God hasn't turned back. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to come back immediately. I don't know what year it was. Josh was in a meeting and uh, we gave him some money and he gave, he called me and he says, Dad, the Lord dealt with my heart to, uh, to, to give it all. And it was, I don't know what it was, $20 or something. He didn't have a lot of money. He said, God dealt my heart to give it all. I said, uh, God's going to bless you. And I knew when he got home, he wanted something. Do you think it would you think it'd be back before Monday? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how many's ever, how many's ever blessed in, uh, and then you're, uh, that, that you're hoping it's going to be that way. <laughs> I read about a pastor that knew his family, his family's churches were in need and, uh, 
He said, I'm going to receive an offering and we're going to bless some people that just has a need right now. And so he passed the plates, you know, and up and down the aisles and, uh, and people piled it up. Now, I don't know who would have done it because I, I didn't get to report on how people felt. But he says, now, we're going to repass these plates. And if you're the one who needs that 20, that 50, you go ahead and take it out now. And they passed it back through again. You know, there's something about being thankful about who God is and what God has done for your life because Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, like I said, is not based upon that turkey, that ham and people being frustrated because the roll's burnt and people being frustrated because somebody's late for dinner, people being frustrated because the Cowboys are winning or losing, the Lions are losing, the Lions always lose. The lions are losing. No, we, we, don't, we don't live frustrated because it's about what God did. If God's done anything for you at all, you take this week and you get up on Thursday and you don't let it be about the food. You let it be about being thankful for God's bounty and God's fruitfulness and God's blessing and knowing that the favor of God rests upon you and rests upon your children, amen? And that God has brought you through all of these hard times and difficult times and we are gonna continue to live in victory, amen? Gonna continue to live in victory. Uh, the book of uh, Philippians, can you go there with me real quick? The book of Philippians. Chapter four, Philippians four. Philippians four, verse six. Well, let's just go back to verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. I wonder if this always means always. Huh? For the five of you that believe it. I said, I wonder if this always means always. You, you always like my sayings? Uh, God's always is always, always. Your ways isn't always, always. Your always is not always, always. But God's is, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry. Don't fear. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? See, thanksgiving is the hinge. It's, it's what it swings on. Being thankful. Being thankful. You know, having kids and grandkids, I've just always been able to, I'm still young enough to stay connected I always thought the veggie tail things were great were great kids tools. You know, there's a, there's one, if you haven't seen it lately, it comes recommended by the kids. <laughs> Madam Blueberry. A thankful heart is a happy heart. And uh, it didn't matter what this little blueberry. Received. She had everything and still wasn't thankful until she had a heart change. She had a heart change. She went to the store and bought everything she want, but never thankful. And then once she saw a little boy and a girl being thankful that had nothing, she went to the store and says, where are your thankful hearts, your happy hearts? Which aisle is it in? It doesn't come in an aisle. It comes from him. It comes from him. You can't go buy thankfulness. You can't go buy happiness. You can't go buy joy. It's all in him. And what's sad is him's already in you and people still don't draw from it. He is. So let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is at hand. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't allow the cares of life. But in everything by prayer and supplication, that's what those pilgrims did. Through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ. Guard. It sets up a garrison 
around. It protects your hearts and minds. So that tells me, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So if you just cry and beg and plead without thanksgiving, I don't know where it's going. Because I believe thanksgiving is the prerequisite. You can't just ask God and plead and beg God without thanksgiving, because he says, with prayer, supplication. With thanksgiving, now let your request be made unto God. You can't do it without thanksgiving. You cannot still be moaning and groaning, complaining and being unforgiving, unthankful, unholy, untruthful. You cannot have these things in your life and expect for heaven to show up and meet your need. Thankfulness is the hinge. Gratitude is the hinge in which your life's outcome swings on. And may you always forever know this week, regardless how it turns out, it's not about what's on the table. It's about what's in your heart. Because on this day of Thanksgiving, people are gonna give birth, people are still gonna die. People are gonna be diagnosed, people are gonna be given good reports. Just because it's Thanksgiving Day, that doesn't mean no bad things are going to happen around you in people's lives. But when people see God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, you're going to be able to help change and touch someone. Amen? Amen. Be thankful. Be thankful. Don't allow these last days to steal, kill, and destroy you from the inside out. Keep the joy strong and let God reign in your life and family. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Come on. Would somebody clap for victory with me? Come on.